Hello and welcome to Sentences, a writing podcast. For our first webinar recording, we discuss the college application process along with Austin Lee of Austin Lee Consulting. This webinar was recorded on May of 2022, and we discuss putting together a strong college application and writing excellent college essays. Enjoy! Well, welcome everyone. Chino and I, when we when we started thinking about hosting this webinar, one of our, our primary objective was to arm the the families that we interact with with some more information about the college application process uh, and uh, with some tangible takeaways, some things that you guys can start uh, thinking about with your students now. Uh, and we have a we, you know with the audience, at least with the folks that RSVP'd and said they would be attending tonight, we have. Uh, a wide range of experiences and age r- groups. So uh, we're going to try to thread the needle uh, of relevant information. Uh, so some information might be brand new for some families that they've never heard before. Others might be repeating. Hopefully that's just supporting the path that you're already on and reinforcing what you already knew and know. But hopefully we have some new and relevant information here for everyone. Um, but that's our goal uh, for the for the program today. And like Chino said, if there's any questions that you have at any time, Unmute yourself, raise your hand, turn on your camera, say hello. Uh, we'll answer those questions as, as we go. Um, so I'm going to start. I'm going to share my screen and I have a, a presentation that we'll, we'll work through. You know, how's that look on your side? Is that good? Yeah, thumbs up. Okay. Great. Um, so this is our, our program with Chino. Uh, I'm Austin Lee Admissions Consulting and uh, Sentence Center, uh, Chino and his team. Um, and as we, as we mentioned earlier, um, our goal tonight is to arm you with some information about the college admissions process. And this is uh, a little bit about my background. I spent 17 years working in higher education, predominantly in academic advising for varsity athletes. So that was the bulk of my professional career. And then focusing on student services programming uh, and development uh, for all the entire student athlete populations at the schools that I worked with. Um, but in addition, the last couple of years that I worked uh, in athletic administration, worked really closely with admissions, helping to manage the the varsity athlete admissions process uh, at Stanford. Uh, and for those of you that aren't that familiar with it, it's the same application process as the general student population goes through. It's just on an accelerated timeline because of the recruiting calendar for the different varsity sports. So they're still, you know, same essays, same letters of recommendation, just a, a, a different pace uh, for those, those students that are getting reviewed and applying to Stanford. Uh, and then my last year, uh, I had an opportunity to step away from higher education and, uh, and redirect my career and focus on uh, this next stage uh, in supporting uh, students as they uh, apply and create their college list and sort of plan for that next stage of their academic uh, careers. Uh, And one of those years was working directly um, in admissions, uh, reading for the current first year class at Stanford. So I read the state of Washington and helped make admission decisions for hundreds of applications of the students that were applying to gain admission at Stanford in this current first year class. Um, when you think about the uh, common application, so I know like on the call, we have, we potentially have families uh, with uh, parents that didn't uh, uh, attend university in the United States, or this is their first student that is applying to college in the United States and they, and they haven't experienced um, what, what goes, what all the uh, application process entails, what sort of pieces of information need to be uh, included and to be prepared for to, to start that application process. So one, the thing to remember, the requirements vary by college and system. The, great, the best example is the UC system and the Cal State system here in, in California, where there's a separate application uh, where students need to fill their de- demographic information, their activities, uh, and specific personal insight questions that Chino is going to touch on uh, later in the presentation. But that's a standalone system for the, the state of California and the UC, the nine UCs that make up that college system. Uh, But many other colleges and and universities use the Common App, right? So hundreds, uh, nearly a thousand, I think, um, institutions use the Common App or the Coalition App um, to help uh, consolidate that information so students don't have to provide uh, academic information, demographic information, family background information over and over and over again for each of the schools they apply to. Much of that is consolidated along with the personal uh, essay that students are going to complete. Each, many campuses um, are going to, especially um, uh, private uh, liberal arts institutions, are going to have a, a, a sequence of supplemental questions that are going to be 
uh, required for each of those campuses that the student chooses to apply to. So it can be as many as eight. They're usually generally pretty small, 150 to 250 words, uh, or it could be as few as one. But many campuses will have an additional supplementary question and, uh, that, that'll be part of that application on top of the personal essay that each application, each school is going to have uh, from the student. Letters of recommendation, again, that varies by institution, but typically from one to two uh, letters of recommendation from um, teachers uh, at that student's high school. Um, ideally, when you're thinking about letters of recommendation, the best recommender, the strongest recommendation is from the, 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 the class, that the, the teacher that knows your student the best and the student performed well and was engaged and demonstrated their um their their capabilities as a student in that class that's going to be the strongest letter of recommendation not necessarily the hardest it could doesn't just have to be the hardest class with the best grade um if that teacher doesn't know that student really well, right as an example um i was just working with a, a student today had a conversation where um, one of her teachers is retiring so this is one of the, cha the challenges of um lining up your letters of recommendation having as many as two to three uh teachers in line uh, ready to uh, be in a position to write those those letters for your student, because you know either there's many other reasons that why that a teacher might decide not to write a letter. But in the case of my student, the her history teacher is retiring uh, and is not in a position to write a letter that the teacher had already agreed to write for my student. But fortunately, she's already had two or three other uh, instructors that are in line to help write her letters of recommendation and support her um, through the process. Standardized test scores are another piece of the application. Again, we're still in this sort of tail end pre post COVID world where um, uh, many institutions are, are still operating in a test optional format where you can choose to report your uh, SAT, ACT test scores uh, and AP scores. Um, a handful of institutions have started to shift back from that or going back to re required reporting for those those exams. Um, but still, in many cases, it's, it's optional for those students. And then we have the FAFSA and the CSS profile. The FAFSA is a federal form that gathers all the, the financial information for the family. Students need, and the families need to complete that information in order to be eligible for federal uh, aid, federal financial aid, need-based financial aid at most schools. And then the CSS profile um, a similar form gathers financial information, but also allows students to apply to other non-federal aid um, in addition to the federal aid provided by the FAFSA. Any questions so far about these the the big nuts and sort of nuts and bolts of the application? Okay. Common and coalition application components. We talked about that before. These are the the broad-based national programs where students will will uh, choose to apply. Now, this is going to be also dictated by the schools that the student is applying to. Once again, there are 900 or so uh, institutions that use the common application. There's a fewer number that use the coalition, maybe 300 or so. Um, the uh, institutions that use both, either or. So the student has to choose um, which application to participate in by um, the uh, institutions that they're applying to. Um, and again, these are the key components here, biographical information for each student, academic information, um, uh, classes and grades, right? Uh, activities list, what they what they've participated in during their high school career, honors and awards, letters of recommendation are going to go here in this portal. Uh, their personal essay, Chino is going to touch on some of those personal essay questions, uh, the, the prompts for the personal essay, uh, and uh, later on in the conversation. Um, supplemental questions, again, driven by the institutions that the student has selected to apply to. Standardized test scores, if the student is recording them, uh, and then family financial information. Uh, those are, again, broad strokes. This is all collected in one area, so the student doesn't have to provide its information individually to each campus. It lives in the coalition or common application portal, uh, and then the student selects which institutions they're going to apply to from that portal. Any questions about that so far? All right, um, back when uh, I talked earlier about my background and my transition to this type of work, uh, working as an independent uh, education consultant, helping students apply to college. That's been driven by uh, my motivation to help students find the right fit. That's the primary driver in all of this. It's not which institution is my student academically qualified for that's the highest ranked 
uh, institution on the list, right? That campus might be a, a terrible fit for that student, and then they're not going to be in a position to realize and fulfill uh, all of their their goals that they had set out, why they applied to college in the first place. If they're not at a, a campus that's the right fit for them, the right environment for them to to grow and develop and be successful, again, they're not going to have that fulfilling college uh, experience. How they define their fulfillment and success, um, and I. I even at the institutions that I worked with, Stanford, Harvard, USC, um, there are a number of students, not, not, it's not common, but uh, common enough where you'd work with a student that it was clearly they weren't in the right environment for them to be successful. And it wasn't because of their academic preparation or their ability to, to, to perform the work at those schools. It was because for whatever reason, that point in their life, their, um, personal mental health, um, their, uh, the, the cultural fit on campus, it wasn't the right place for them and they didn't have the type of experience that they were expecting or hoping to have while they were there. Um, so when you're thinking about uh, finding the right fit, the number one priority is establishing what those the student values and what they're what they're looking for uh, in that campus experience. So what's their area of academic interest? Does this campus provide you what you're looking for academically? Can you actually major in that? What's the process for actually majoring in that particular program? What's the campus culture, right? Is it Liberal conservative? Is it politically active? I mean, what's the general environment that it's uh, that they, that that's, uh, that you experience on campus? The setting: rural, urban, cold weather, warm weather. All of these factors that uh, the student is going to value. Those can be really important um, uh, when they're spending that much time, nine months out of the year, at this uh, at this new place for them. Undergraduate enrollment: the size of the institution matters, right? It's a different environment, a different uh, experience. Uh, depending on if it's a smaller uh, private school or a large state institution, not better or worse, but just different. Uh, and then student activities, what are the, the priorities for those students to be involved in? What do they think they might want to experience while they're there? And are those opportunities that they can actually realize when they're on that campus? So you use those to help drive the creation of your college list. So we think about the college list, we're, we're really talking about maybe 10 institutions that were, you know, that sort of feels like the right number to me. It can be more, it can be less. When we start thinking about all those supplemental essays and everything that has to go into that, you know, you need, that seems like a, a manageable number given everything that students are asked to do. Um, but how you arrive at that list, right? You start with your academic interest, you define that. You overlay the campus culture uh, with that environment and the extracurricular curricular opportunities for the student. And that's how you arrive at that target list that the student ultimately is going to apply to. And that's an ongoing process. It changes and moves as uh, the student learns more information, grows in their sophomore, junior, senior year. That changes and it's constantly defined and redefined uh, and ultimately until it's time to apply. Right. Um, when we, when we, is there any questions so far? I know I've jumped ahead a couple slides. Um, okay, when we're talking about applying the application process, one of the co most common questions that comes up in these types of discussions or with any student is, you know, what do they need to do in order to be attractive or compelling to these you know, elite institutions? Uh, and really what that comes from is understanding what your extracurricular choices are, right? Um, and in talking about your extracurricular choices, it really, and people don't often believe me when I say this, but it really doesn't matter what you choose. It matters that you understand why you chose it, what your impact in that group, on that group of organiz or organization was, and what did you learn from that choice? And the earlier, the earlier you can do that uh, in your uh, student's career, the, the more informed decisions they're gonna make about the next thing that they choose to be involved in or what they continue to be involved in. And ultimately when, they, when it comes time to write those essays and put together a coherent, comprehensive application, they're gonna be in a much better position to do that if they can understand why they did what they did. Um, maximizing your available academic opportunities, no student is gonna be penalized or rewarded for being at a school that uh, only offers one AP class or a school that offers 25 or 30, right? It's more about what you did in the context of your school and in your community, what was available to you and how did you uh, take advantage of those opportunities. Um, building relationships with high school faculty and staff, Tina's gonna uh, talk about this also, but that's one key thing that students can do from the first day they set foot on a high school campus. They can start working on that in middle school, right? Building relationships with those those teachers and the staff um, uh, uh, transactionally, right? That's going to be who writes letters of recommendation, but they're going to have a much better, more fulfilling college high school experience if they're able to build those relationships and have those interactions with the teachers when they're on that campus. 
And then ultimately, when you're thinking about the application, you've got your list, you're working through that, establishing a timeline with clear deadlines, dates, and deliverables. That's key to managing all of the different moving pieces and parts that are going to that are part of today's uh, college application process. Right. Uh, we're going to send this slide out to you, so you don't need to try to memorize all this information or freeze it in your brain or do a screenshot or anything. We'll we'll share this with you. Um, but this is a timeline of what uh, is going on or what should be students should be thinking about or working on at the different points in their junior and senior year. So if we look now, we're sort of end of junior year depending on when school gets out, maybe they're out already or they're finishing up in, the, in a couple weeks. Um, but that first bar, the college and career major exploration, starting to build your list, that's an ongoing process that continues. Um, resume prep letters are recommendation for the students, like as an example for the students that haven't had those conversations and they're high school juniors, they're gonna start applying this summer and in the fall. They need to be having those conversations now before teachers you know, get off into the summer and potentially are harder to get a hold of um, while, they're, while they're away from campus. So, uh, we'll share this with you later um, uh, after the program, but this is uh, a timeline that students can use to sort of have touch points about what they should be prioritizing, what they should be planning for and looking forward to in the next few months. Um, ultimately, the students have applied. Uh, they've been uh, admitted. They have, a, you know, hopefully more than one, uh, unless it's their number one school, but as, as many uh, acceptances uh, as schools that they applied to. Uh, now it's time to review what those offers are. Re go back through and recalibrate the student priorities again. Maybe if you haven't had a chance to visit that campus, go visit the campus and see if everything that you've learned about uh, in your research aligns with what you feel when you're on campus for that first time. Uh, and then uh, you know, get comfortable with incomplete information. Chino and I have talked about this a lot. Um, we try to reduce as much of that in the, in the process so students can get as much information as they can uh, to make informed, uh, you know, sort of um, thoughtful decisions, but ultimately there, there's going to be incomplete information and students have to be comfortable going, hey, I'm, I'm not going to actually know what it's going to be like to be on campus as a first year student until you actually do that. You know, no one else, even if you're, you know, your twin sibling is going through the same thing, it's going to be a different experience for both of those students. So you have to be comfortable with incomplete information because you can't know everything. Uh, and then ultimately you accept uh, and then, you know, I can go off to do to do great things. So that's the, the wrapping my portion. Um, any questions before we start talking about sort of nuts and bolts, um, tips on writing, essay prompts, anything that has come up that I talked too fast over or didn't address clearly enough? Go ahead and fire those questions away. Yeah, so feel free to ask any questions if you don't want to, I mean, you can unmute yourself and ask it uh, to the group or you can ask it in the chat and I can just bring it up um, at the end or towards the end of the session. So does anyone have to anything to ask about the process itself? Okay, so it seems like um, we're ready to move on to the next step. So the next step is, um, the actual college essay. So as you know, we're, we're a writing school here at Sentence Center and um, we uh, are offering help with the college essay. And the reason why we're doing this is because so many parents and kids have come to us asking for help. Um, I do have to say that this college application process is close to my heart just because I just went through it. So I have a son right now who just gra who's, who's graduating uh, he's a senior, he's graduating high school, and he'll be moving on to college. So we went through this whole process that um, Austin just described. And, um, you know, it, highs and lows, that, that's all I can say, highs and lows. And uh, we were happy at the outcome. So um, we're, you know, th that's why I'm particularly interested in this. Um, it's close to my heart. And at the same time, I'd like to help as many kids through the process um, to make it less stressful for them, for you as parents as well. So the first thing I'm going to discuss is, you know, the requirements. What, what, requi what, what, what do schools look for when you write the college essay? So the college essay is one piece of the puzzle. If you're taking a look at it as a puzzle, uh, lots of pieces. And one piece there is the college essay. Now, some people are saying that the piece right now is bigger because 
standardized testing is 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 optional for some schools um and some people are also saying that you know it's the best way for you to tell your story it's it's in you know from what i've heard what admissions officers are looking for is um, for you to introduce yourself to the school. So think at, of the essay as a way for your child to introduce, say hi, um, and, and give them more information about you. So um, as Austin mentioned, there are um, three applications, main applications. There is the common application. There are the UCs, which is a different application altogether. And there's also the coalition application. So we're going to take a look at first the common application. Now, the common application, you're going to have to fill up all your information. And there will be a portion there where you will have to write or your child will have to write one essay. And um, let me give you an example of one of these prompts. So I'm sharing my screen and here it is. So you will be, um, or your child will have eight prompts and he, he or she will have to choose one of these prompts to answer, to write in an essay. How long should it be? 250 to 650 words. And I'll, I'll give you more or less what that looks like. But uh, what I wanted to highlight is just an example. This is one of the eight common application essay prompts. And um, there's no secret to these prompts. You can Google them. You can find all eight prompts online. Uh, but this is the one that, um, you know, I see a lot of kids writing about. So uh, here's the prompt. The lessons we take from obstacles we encounter can be fundamental to later success. Recount the time when you faced a challenge, setback, or failure. How did it affect you? And what did you learn from the experience? So as you notice, um, this will have to be a narrative, most probably a narrative. It's going to be a story. That's why I always tell uh, my students, you know, as long as you, you're able to tell a story in an essay format, you know, that's a great skill to have. Um, because here they're asking you to recount a time and talking about an experience. So um in our classes, for example, when I when I hold classes, I, I teach uh, first through sixth graders. We already introduce questions like this, and from what I noticed, even you know, even as late as sixth graders or fifth graders, they get uncomfortable when they have to write about something like this. First of all, it's open ended, right? You're talking about success, you're talking about challenges, setbacks, and failures. And I always, when I introduce a topic similar to this, not this exact topic, but something similar, I'd have kids who would say, oh, I've never been successful in my life. I've never experienced failure. What is a challenge? So um, obviously for kids like that, we would have to dig a little bit deeper, guide them through the process. Is you know, Failure doesn't have to be something catastrophic, could be you know, something you know, like a, a test, a failed friendship, um, or, you know, a, a time when they missed a shot in a basketball game, things like that. As long as they can talk about that experience um, and say what they learned from the experience, so there's a reflection involved, I think they will be on the right track. But just, just to show you, this is the type of essay or the type of prompt that they'll be facing, it does make them comf uh, uncomfortable at times. Okay, so for, that's for the common essay, um, common app essay. And they, like I said, they have to choose one of the eight prompts. Now, if your child is applying to the UCs, you will have a different um, college essay or college essays to write all together. So let me just share this screen right here. And UCs call them the personal insight question, PIQs. You'll get eight choices, but your child will have to do four of them. Now, what's the difference? One compared to four. Here, you only have 350 words. So about half of what you were expected in the Common App. So here are two examples of the questions. And again, these are available online. You can Google them, um, but I'm just using two of these, just to give an example. 
Um, describe an example of your leadership experience in which you have positively influenced others, helped resolve disputes, or contributed to group efforts over time. So again, it's asking for an example of an experience, so a narrative. And you're talking about things like leadership, influence. So again, this is, you know, this, this tends to make kids uncomfortable, but it's always a good thing to think about, even when they're young. Um, another question is, what have you done to make your school or your community a better place? Mm. I sort of introduced this question to the younger kids already. And oftentimes, when I, uh, you know, when I, when I give them that prompt, um, I would usually get one or two saying, I've, I've never done, you know, I've, I've never done community service before. Um, does beach clean, does a beach cleanup count? So things like that, and it's, you know, it's, it's up to us to sort of guide them to that direction. Um, 350 words. Now, let me just, just for reference, let me just go ahead and show you um, what a 350 word and a 650 word essay looks like. So let's go and share my screen. So this is an example of a seventh, eighth grade essay. This is what we do in class at Sentence Center. This is what we, tra- uh, we, we teach them. Now, this essay is a five paragraph essay. It's an argument. And as you can see, it has um, a, an introduction, three body paragraphs and a conclusion. Now, this essay right here, so the full essay just for your reference, is 558 words long. So for your Common App, it's going to be about this size or this length. Now, if you take the first three paragraphs right here, that's 366 words long. So for the UC applications, you'll only get about two to three paragraphs in which you can expand on a certain topic. For the Common App, you'll have more. So that's you know just that's just to give you a visual reference and i do get you know the feedback from some of those who are doing the 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 uc apps that the 350 word essays are actually more challenging it's right it's harder to write something short and concise and focused and to the point um than something that's longer that's what you know that's what i get so um that's for ucs and the third type of essay is the supplemental essay. So if you if your child will be applying to private schools, private institutions, most of these or some of these schools will have additional essays for you to write ad- added to the common app. So um, most of these questions we we usually call these questions the why do you want it why did you choose us questions. So they're very specific and they're very focused about the school and the program that you're looking at. So for example, these are uh, from two schools that my son applied to, um, NYU, New York University, urban setting um, in the heart of Manhattan. I don't even think they have a physical campus. They're mostly just buildings, but you are in the heart of Manhattan. And excuse me, this is one of their supplemental questions. As you can see, they're, they're a bunch. So we would like to know more about your interest in NYU. What motivated you to apply to NYU? Why have you applied or expressed interest in a particular campus, school, college, program, and or area of study? If you have applied to more than one, please also tell us why, why you are interested in these additional areas of study or campuses. We want to understand why NYU. As you can see that the, the question is long-winded, Basically, he's asking, why do you choose us? And they give a 400-word maximum, which is similar to the UCs. Uh, And here, what they're looking at or what they're looking for is, have you done your research? Did you choose NYU just because it's in Manhattan? Or did you actually look at specific areas of study? You know, maybe uh, I know, for example, NYU has a very strong entrepreneurial program. Their, um, their international studies is top-notch, I think one of the best in the country. And if you applied to NYU because of that, you'd probably want to put that here in your supplemental essay. So it's very specific. Now, Dartmouth, uh, small Ivy League uh, liberal arts school in New Hampshire, 
um, a little bit more creative, their prompt is, the Hawaiian word moelo is often translated as story, but it can also refer to history, legend, genealogy, and tradition. Use one of these translations to introduce yourself. So again, they're going deeper into you or the student as a person, a little bit creative by using the Hawaiian word. And um, you know anything that you want to add, because in your common app, you're going to list down your activities, your extracurriculars. Now, if there's anything that's not there, this is also the best place to add that in. So they get the, uh, a more complete picture of who you are. So for example, I'm going to use my, my son, because like I said, we, we, we did this. Uh, we just went through this. Um, all his activities were there in the Common App. He had his art. He's huge into art. Um, he had his sports. Um, he had his community service. And for this question, he talked more about his culture. So he's, um, you know, he's, he's part Filipino and he, uh, he, he, he really, he's really proud of that. And he, he feels an affinity for, uh, to the Filipino culture. So he used that and he talked about, you know, his tradition, you know, what we do at home. We speak to him in Tagalog at home. Uh, we eat Filipino food. You know, we, we get together as a family. All of that went into play in his supplemental essay. And it can also come into play in your common app essay. But the important part is that your child should be able to comfortably and con confidently write about those topics. Okay, so um, before I proceed, <laughs> does anyone have any questions about just about the, the prompts, the essays? Anyone? Okay, so I was gonna, I was gonna are, are we gonna, are we ready for Javi to come in pretty soon? Or I was just gonna add one thing. Um, about yeah, go ahead. The, just an example about the essays. If you, I don't know if the, the, our group noticed, but when uh, the, the common app prompt that Chino um, displayed um, was actually fairly similar or had components of uh, the two uh, personal insight questions um, from the UC application. So it wouldn't be, you know, cutting and pasting, but you, if you talked about a particular topic or uh, um, an opportunity in that personal essay where you showed leadership or overcame a challenge, well, that specific example, if it was a club or organization or team or something, could be used to answer that question about how you made an impact in your community or in your school, right? You could, you could um, find those threads. So you're not necessarily recreating every essay or every topic from scratch. You can uh, you can use uh, components of, of that to, again, sort of create that narrative that actually flows through the entire application and doesn't just stand alone in each different part of the, the essay. Yeah, and that's that, that's absolutely right. And 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 most um, kids, or at least most kids we work with, uh, my son included, they apply to more than 10 schools. I mean, that's kind of the norm. Um, and does that mean you need to write 10 separate essays? Well, if you're doing a common app, you only need one, but you'll have those supplements. And that means possibly 10 supplemental essays, which you can, you know, you, it can be similar for some schools, but if they're really specific, like what programs are you looking for? You can't, you know, it, it can't yeah. be, it can't be something that you've exactly. based. Yeah. Like based Stanford on. has one, I, I, Chino and I talked about this before, Stanford has one prompt that's you know, write a letter to introduce yourself to your, your roommate, your first year roommate, because you're not going to know who that is uh, at Stanford. So uh, you, and it's really interesting to read those and see how students approach it. Again, like you're, that's not going to be a make or break essay, but it can, it can make you stand out, uh, but it's not going to necessarily, you know, unless you don't do it, <laughs> um, be really negative. But it's a really interesting way, to, like another opportunity for a student to show who they are and introduce themselves to the school. Absolutely. And um, so what, what, what one thing, one last thing I wanted to show you is, you know, just some tips, because I know a, no, a number of parents are asking me, you know, you know, my, my kids in middle school or early high school, or they're, they're close to graduating. What are some things that I can do right now? School's almost over. Summer's coming. Um, so here are some tips and, and um, Austin, feel free to jump in anytime if you wanted to add. So here are things that you can do today. The first thing is start and maintain a resume. 
and activity list. So um, here, you know, you don't don't wait till you're a senior um, to list down all the things that you do because you, you might leave something off, especially if it happened a long time ago. So this this almost happened to my son. Just just um, just a quick anecdote. We were doing his um, UC application. He had everything listed down and he was about to click submit. I was going over, we were going over it and I got, hey, and, and, and then I remembered something all of a sudden, didn't you do theater in as a freshman and a sophomore? And we were looking through the list. Oh yeah, we didn't put it in there. So we almost missed that, but he got that in there the last second. And um, that's why it's always good to maintain that list. It's a running list. You can put it in your notes app in the phone so that, you know, it's always there uh, and then constantly refresh, refresh. So it's not like when, right when you're doing your application, you're scrambling to find out what you did in the past. Um, And that list is also important moving forward. You know, what, you know, what, what specific interests did I have that I wanted to explore, which is the second tip um, any of the activities that you really liked or your child really liked you know explore them um, again using my son as an example he loves art um, he did a lot of art camps and he eventually volunteered to um, be a camp counselor at their summer camps and now he works part-time for them so he he really explored that and he loves doing what he's doing so he doesn't mind spending his Saturdays in his art studio teaching kids and he won't mind um, this summer at uh, you know, spending time um, spending time at those summer camps as well. Um, As Austin said, build relationships with teachers. And this is especially important for older kids, juniors and seniors. These teachers will be writing your recommendations. So the earlier you can tell them, that you know, earlier you can make the request, the better. Um, make sure they know you. Uh, aside from you know, maybe one aspect outside of the classroom, that would be great. Um, usually, English teachers are, are are good here because they get to read your essays as well, so they know another aspect of you. But it doesn't it doesn't have to be. You could, you could be any teachers, counselors, anyone who works closely with you. Um, the fourth one is get early transcripts, grade reports. So take a look at all your grades. Um, and if there are any classes or any subjects that you need, you know, you need shoring up on, it's a good idea to start with that. Um, read essay prompts. And this is, uh, I think this is super important. You can never start too early. Just if you're not starting to write the essay, at least read the essay prompts. Okay, and the most and the reason why is even if you don't have a draft, at least it's in the back of your head and it's sort of percolating subconsciously. Your your mind will be trying to answer that question, so that when you actually begin writing the essay drafts, you'll have you know your your mind will have thought molded over. Um, I you know don't start late. You know this is not a time to procrastinate. Um, even if you, like I said, even if you don't do any writing per se, at least you get to read the essay prompts and, um, and, you know, think about them. So go ahead. I was just going to say that, I was just going to, um, add one more, uh, example, uh, or sort of support to what we're saying about the resume and activity list. Um, and the important, one of the importance of uh, thinking about it uh, and having that sense of self-reflection in those activities, but also the importance of keeping track of it early. Um, I'm one of the students I'm working with now. Um, uh, she is a volunteer for the summer Girl Scout camp um, down south on the peninsula. And for her, the first time we worked through her list, it was pretty low on that list. Um, and as far as like priority, like things that she had valued or spent the most time, she thought most time on. Uh, and it, even though that's not a, you know, flashy, you know, paid internship or uh, research uh, in, with a you know, faculty member on a college campus, um, that actually can be a really compelling activity for her because it's something that she values uh, uh, and uh, cares about and that she participates in every summer. 
And if you think about it from the perspective, the opportunity for developing leadership, for influencing young girls uh, in today's uh, you know, uh, climate, um, the impact that she's having, and I see that because my daughter actually attends the same camp, but has never interacted with this particular student. But I know how value, value uh, what type of value that has for those girls that are in that program. Uh, and uh, even though the camp counselors might not necessarily recognize um, the impact that they're having, they're doing it because it was it's fun and they had a great experience. They want to do that uh, for those students. It really has a significant impact and can tie into really uh, other meaningful uh, demonstrated leadership capacity that that student has had uh, and direct impact and influence in this organization. Um, so that's an, an example of something that, you know, again, it's not particularly flashy, but it's uh, sincere, uh, dedicated, consistent interest um, where the students can demonstrate their impact. Yep. Yeah, great. that's a great example. So uh, a couple of recommendations. Also, what you can do is you can consult the college counselor if you need direction, especially with creating that list. Um, and Javi, my son, actually zoomed in, and he's going to talk about that a little bit. Uh, and uh, the list, I think that's 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 also really important. And a college counselor can help if you if you, if you have no idea, if your child has no idea, that may be a good thing. And if finances are an issue, you may want to consult a financial aid specialist ahead of time. Um, for the writing, um, you can attend an essay writing workshop. Um, we're holding four workshops this summer: two in June, two in August. Austin will be there. We'll be helping out if you need help getting started um, with your S. Uh, if your child needs help getting started, um, or just creating that draft, refining that draft, any stage of the essay writing process, we have that. We have those workshops this summer. Um, we're gonna send, like I said, we're gonna send out the handouts. Uh, I'm gonna send it out in the chat and also send it in the email. Uh, but before we begin, or before we continue, uh, I do have my son who was uh, who was nice enough to share his time. He's a busy teenager. He's he's about to graduate, so lots of things going on. Uh, but he, you know, he uh, volunteered to share his time just to talk about his process. Like I said, it's it's close to my heart. It's close to his heart because we just went through it. So um, we have a couple of parents here and students as well. Um, have you what? tips do you have uh, in terms of the college application process? What helped you? Um, what helped you get into Dartmouth? So he's going to Dartmouth this fall. Um, so go ahead, Javi. Yeah, so I just went through the experience myself. I wrote all my essays last fall. And I think that one of the biggest mindset or the, the biggest thing that helped me was sort of my mindset that um, I held while I went about writing my essay. Because a, a big, a very substantial tip that I got that has stuck with me is to write an essay that would be compelling towards a human. Um, I, it's, it's hard as an admissions counselor to like review hundreds and hundreds of um, applications from each individual student and at, or at um, as time goes on it can get really repetitive to see like um, children talk about their own accomplishments um, their own uh, just like a list of things that they've done so I really tried to make my essays and my writing appeal just be interesting to a person just show who I am my own like what, what I think what I feel uh, my own philosophy I, I plan on studying art. So my um, essay was about my philosophy regarding the creation of art. And so I just tried to make it interesting and appealing to a person because these are people who are reading your essays. And these are people who are going to be the ones to eventually decide whether or not they're, you're a good fit for you. There's that consideration is most important. It, I'd say it's the most important consideration It even trumps strictly following the prompts they give you. Because even if you don't strictly adhere to those prompts, if you have a good story to tell, that's all that really matters in the end. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Um, okay, so we 
can open it up now for questions. Hopefully, um, uh, we'll, we'll have um, questions directed to me, to Austin, or even Javi, who, who's been, like I said, we've, we're fresh with the process. Austin's been doing this forever, so he, he knows it like the back of his hand. So um, any questions that you have for us about either the college application process or essays? Okay, well, I'll ask Javi one more question before we go, if, if no one has any questions. What, uh, oh, we do have a question in the chat. Yeah. Uh, so we have, um, okay, this is a question about the essay. Um, do you suggest students write the max amount of words allowed on essays? Are longer essays better than shorter ones? Are, are longer essays better than short? So the word count. Um, what did you feel about the word count, Javi? Did you um, did you think that the shorter essays were more challenging? The longer ones, were you like always, you know, highlighting and and doing the word count on Google Docs? Uh, yeah, honestly, I think um, for because all the essays have word counts, and the way that I went about starting to write an essay is I'd sort of gather my thoughts on it. I'd give it. I'd give it a go. And almost always it went over the word count. I think if it doesn't go over the word count on your first try, you're not including enough. And then from there, I was able to highlight exactly what I wanted to keep and the, the, the essence of what I was trying to say. So it's very important to be concise and really figure out what you're trying to say in your writing. So in that sense, I think, yes, absolutely use the word count to its maximum limit as much as you can, um, especially for the common app. I think that's 650 words. I know that some, um, some colleges will ask for like a 250 word supplement or something short, and those are tiny. So you have to use as much space as you can to say as much as you can. And those word counts are there for a reason. Um, they're there because that's how much the counselors know or the admins people know that they are willing to read so if they're giving you that much space, of course, use it. No, I was going to say that the only time that I can think of where it's likely that a student might go under the word count is on one of those small supplemental questions where it's something that, you know, what's the biggest problem in the world today, right? And you, they give you 100, 100 words or 150 words or something like that, right? That's you, like those, you might come short, you know, slightly under, right? You don't need to add three or four more words to get to that, you know, that cap. But in those the 350, 250, 650 word essays, it's, uh, you, it's been typically challenging for the student to get it under that in the first draft, just like Avi said. Okay, yeah, I, I usually recommend to students, I mean, use the word count, but don't force it. So if, um, you know, if your essay, if they ask for 650 and your essay is 600, and that's right. all you have, that's fine. You don't, don't, don't need to push that extra 50 words. Um, and at the same time, if it's over, if you're at 700 and you're 650, then yeah, do the strategy of, of just uh, of narrowing it down and, and, and refining that focus because they do want to see that you stay in focus when you're writing the essay. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions about the essay? I have, one, I have another question for Javi. What was the toughest part of the entire applications process for you? What was the most challenging part? Um, I think that it was just the circumstances of the time that I applied because as applications this season was rolling in, I'm also, I was also a senior in high school and I was finishing up the IB. So I had like a sudden influx of work. So mm -hmm. finishing each of my essays um, and then I'm applying for arts. So I had an arts portfolio for each of the colleges that I applied to. And then I had all my work for the IB, which is um, the diploma I'm getting for high school. So I think all of that came around like fall, winter. So that was probably the toughest part only because of the, the workload. But um, I didn't really mind writing the essays in themselves as they're just stories about myself. They're, they're stories about who I am. And so it was not, I'd say, especially challenging topics to write about. It was more just how many of them there were. 
Okay. Yeah. Um, we were actually, when, when Javi was finishing his art po- portfolio, that was in December. And we were actually in Italy at that time. It was, we were on vacation and he had to finish his portfolio. Uh, but he loved it because we were, we were in the middle of, of, of art. Uh, and we were, you know, we were in Florence in the Uffici gallery. And there he was there spending half a day with his sketchbook, just sketching all these beautiful sculptures and uh, I could tell he was in heaven, but at the same time, it was a lot of work as well. And um, you know, if uh, like I said, that's that's why if you can get a couple of things out of the way, so you can focus on your essay or your portfolio, that would that would be huge. Because if you had to do that and then another other things like creating your list and all that, then that would put more stress. So whatever you can put out of the way, whatever you can finish. Um, you can chip away, you know, that would definitely be helpful. Okay. Well, if you guys think of any other questions uh, or follow-up questions, you, it's easy to reach us by email. And again, we're, we're sending all the information through email. We're sending the, the handouts um, through the email, through email. Um, and um, like I said, if you have any follow-ups, please feel free to do so. I know maybe some of you are, are, are itching to watch the Warriors game already. So <laughs> we'll end <laughs> before seven. Austin, is there anything you want to, you wanted to add? Uh, I think, uh, yeah, just that we're um, available uh, to answer questions that you have. I think you have both of our emails from the presentation. You're going to get the handouts. Um, I emailed everybody the reminder uh, about tonight's session. So you have that too. At, at any point now and in the future, don't hesitate to, to reach out. And this is why we do what we do, because we want to work with students and help students manage this process. Um, and then I also want to talk to Javi about his time in Florence um, uh, and some of those that experience, because I was blown away by the statue of David and I didn't expect to be. <laughs> okay. All right. So thank you, everyone. And, uh, and again, uh, if you want to reach us, you know where to reach us. Uh, Thanks, Javi, for dropping by and uh, go Warriors. Goodbye. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye.